another spot where you must be willing to go for it. Let's see if Len is willing to go for it. Woohoo! Didn't see this coming. If you're going to bet small on the flop, I love the turn blast. Hello everyone, I'm Jonathan Little for PokerCoaching.com, here today with episode 342 of Weekly Poker Hand. Here we have another hand from High Stakes Poker. Huge thanks to Poker Go for letting me use this hand. Make sure you are watching High Stakes Poker on Poker Go. And also, I have strategy segments in the newest episodes of Poker After Dark. So make sure you get in there, check those out, and improve your poker skills. Here I have a hand where Lin G raises it up with the Queen Jack offsuit. Perfectly good, fine, and standard play. Um, Lynn is a startup investor. I'm not entirely sure of her poker abilities. She did commentate on the high stakes feud between Dale Negreanu and Doug Polk. Make sure you check out my videos where I go through a lot of hands from that grudge match. And her commentary was great. She seems like good, strong thinking player, which is cool to see. So she raises it up and folds around to Brandon Steven in the big blind, who is a good, strong Recreational player, I think, although he plays a lot of poker. He is an entrepreneur, has all sorts of things going on in life, including car dealerships, health clubs, hockey teams, all sorts of stuff. He's been around the circuit for a long time. We used to play a lot of poker tournaments together pre-COVID, but I haven't seen him in a year. <laughs> anyway, he calls the big blind. Flop comes. 10, 8, 6. Brandon checks, and Lynn, with her gut shot straight draw has a very, very, very clear bet in my mind. This is a spot where when they are playing very deep stacked, if you bet this hand and get raised, unless it's a big raise, you can even call and try to get there with the nine or the queen or the jack. So this is definitely a hand you want to fire with. And whenever you bet the flop, this is a situation where you already know you are going to continue firing away. Pew, pew, pew. Whenever you have over cards, gut shot straight draw, basically everything. Don't be afraid to apply aggression, especially, especially, especially when you lack showdown value. I actually have a PDF with all sorts of cash game tips, and I'm sure this is on there. That's completely for free for you. Make sure you get the free cash game PDFs. Cash game PDFs, what am I saying? The free cash game PDF at pokercoaching.com slash cash tips. It's free for you. Go there and get it. It's written better than I speak. All right. This is the spot where she must bet. Pot is 5,200. She goes for a small bet of 2,000. This is a situation where I think I would go ahead and start ramping up the bet sizing a little bit more. Typically, when you are betting infrequently, as you should do on these very coordinated boards, meaning a board that could connect very well with Brandon's preflop calling range in the big blind, which contains all the middle connected cards. When you are betting here, you usually want to be betting a little bit bigger because you're essentially representing a polarized range of your best hands and your draws. So I think I'd go more like 3,500 here. I think that's going to get more money in the pot immediately with your best hands, which is fine. And it's going to give you more fold equity with your draws, which is also fine. And when you do triple it off, spoiler alert, when you do triple it off in this scenario, you just win more money because your opponent puts in more money on the flop and on the turn when they fold or on the river when they fold, right? Anyway, Brandon calls, as he, of course, is going to do with this top pair middle kicker. Turns to four. Brandon checks. Another spot where you must be willing to go for it. Let's see if Len is willing to go for it. Woohoo! Didn't see this coming. If you're going to bet small on the flop, I love the turn blast. Like I said, if you make it easy for your opponents to just call small bets, they're gonna call you down very, very frequently. But whenever you really apply the aggression, when you really make it difficult on them, this is where you actually will get some people to fold out the vast, 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 vast majority of their range. Now, you run into a problem though. Whenever you bet 13,000 into the 9,000 pot on the turn, as Len does, you have to ask, what are they actually gonna call with? Because if they're only gonna call with a 10 or better on the turn, then you don't really want to bluff the river, right? Because a lot of people do not fold a 10 on the river. Also, if your opponent's willing to slow play, if they are willing to sit here and check call with a set or a two pair or with a straight, that's when this gets really, really costly. The great thing, though, 
is that most people, I'm not going to say this is what Brandon does, but most people actually check raise the flop with their best hands. So if they check call with only a 10 or worse, and you can blast them off of almost all of that on the turn, Len's bet is going to just pick up this 9,000 pot the vast majority of the time. And the great thing about having Queen Jack is that when you don't pick up this pot, you're going to get there on the river sometimes. So this is a very, very good bet, if, assuming you are going to use a smaller size on the flop. Now, what do you do with eight, Brandon's ace-8 on the 10 8 6 4 and your opponent overpots the turn? I can tell you, against most people, you should just let it go. But Brandon is a well-versed poker player. He is... Been, he's been in the situation many times where people are going to apply a lot of aggression, and he knows you can't just go around folding middle pair, because if you go around folding middle pair, your opponents are just going to fleece you by winning all your money. But they'll make you fold out way too often, right? So this is a spot where he has to stick around. He does call. Rivers the 10. Brandon checks. What do you think Lynn should do here? It's a pretty nasty river, right? What do you think she should do? I want you to think about this. And then pause the video and write what you would do in the comment section below. If you were in Len's shoes, would you give up and check? Would you bet small, like 13,000? Would you bet big, like pot, 35,000? Or would you go all in for 6x pot, 187,000? Pause the video and write what you would do below. All right, did you do it? Good, good job, good work. If you didn't do it, shame on you. This is a spot where even though the 10 nails Brandon's range to call the turn bet, I think Len needs to go for the bet on the river. The question is how much? Well, what is she trying to get to fold? She is trying to get an eight or a six or pocket sevens or pocket fives or pocket nines to fold at this point. Or perhaps some like weird hero call ace high with like ace nine, right? So how much should she bet to get those hands to fold? I think the right answer here is roughly pot. Because if she goes small, like 13,000, she's going to get called virtually every time, right? Um, you got to think an eight's not going to fold for 13,000. A six is probably even going to find a call. So I, I don't think you can go small. Should you go pot? I think pot's good. Should you go over pot? Like all in or even two times pot. I think that bet size is actually not good. And the reason I think that size is not good is because Brandon can very clearly have some tens here. And if he has a 10, he is literally never going to fold. If you put them all in, maybe the GTO play is to fold some tens if you get put all in because you would also have some full houses and straights here. But I don't think many people are folding a 10. So I really, really dislike a humongous bet, but I do think a sizable bet here is nice based on what we are trying to get to fold. And Lynn does go for the good pot size bet, 32,000 into 35. I think this is quite nice. At this point, Brandon went in the tank, says, what do you got? You don't got to tell me, I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> she says, what was the question? Um, she says, well, for $30,000, you can call and see both cards. And uh, he decided to not pay. Whenever you are bluffing, something a lot of people do very poorly is talk. Whenever a lot of people are bluffing, they are so excited, so nervous that they cannot put a sentence together to save their life. But Lynn put together a joke. She says, well, for 32000 you can see them both. Most people cannot do that. And I would venture to say that her willingness to fire out this bluff, even on a pretty bad card... And her ability to put a good sentence together, a funny sentence together, water this pot, and Brandon made the fold. To be fair, if you put me in Brandon's shoes and my opponent's capable of putting together a joke, I'm probably going to fold too. That said, we're playing high stakes poker. The kitty game's down the street, everyone. Whenever you're playing for all the money, most of the people who are willing to play for all the money came prepared. They're going to be able to have good table talk. They're going to be able to run good bluffs. And for that reason, you sure better find some good hero calls because otherwise they are going to bluff you out of your seat like Lynn did on this hand. Good job, good work. So that's going to be it for today. If you enjoyed this hand, do me a favor, click the like and subscribe button below. Also, 
I have a training site. Did you know that? It's called pokercoaching.com. Make sure you check it out. It's completely free to get a trial membership. Check that out at pokercoaching.com slash free. Good luck in your games. Have a great, great week. Thanks for being here. And I'll talk to you next time. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more strategy lessons, pre-flop charts, and interactive quizzes, make sure you get your free membership to pokercoaching.com right now at pokercoaching.com slash free. I'll talk to you next time.